What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about the electric roller rink on the guitar. That refers to playing both across and up the neck. Here's across or horizontal. And then here is up the neck or vertical. That was the same scale played two different ways, right? So when I was a kid and I was learning how to solo, one of the things I did was I took a piece of paper and I wrote all the notes in G out and made a map and learned and memorized that map. And after years of teaching this and playing live and on studio recordings, there were some patterns that I noticed were, that were reoccurring that really helped my students and other people memorize these so that they could become melodically conversational. And what I mean by that is that they understand these patterns so well that they can begin to improvise because the patterns are second nature to them, just like they are words in their native tongue or their language. So, so let's go and let's check out all these boxes today. Okay, so we have seven notes in a major scale, which means we actually have seven boxes going up the neck because each box is going to start on each note in the major scale. Today we're going to work exclusively with G major. Once you memorize the major scale, all the minors will come into play as well because a vast majority of the minors are inside of the major and they're just occurring at different points, okay? So let's look at box one in G major, okay? I'm gonna play it real quick and here's how it sounds. And if we add the extended notes, Now check this out, there are three things that happen in every one of these boxes, okay? The first one is we have a couple three note pairs. So what do I mean by that? Check this out, box one, here's our root. But this note is actually in the box because it's in the position. Each one of these boxes is a four fret position, right? So in box one, this is our first pair, and it's what I call a middle pair. So it's index, middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky. Also, there's a free download for this, so follow along on the piece of paper if you need a more enhanced visual. Feel free to pause this and check out the map. Okay, so that's our first pair, right? That's a middle pair. Now watch this. Here's our second pair. It's a ring. So index ring pinky, index ring pinky. That's the first pair. That's the second pair. And they're always a middle pair and a ring pair and they're right next to each other, okay? That's why I call them a pair. So pair, pair. The second thing that happens in every box is there is a string that only has two notes. You notice these pairs are three notes, right? So in this box, we have a pair, pair, Two notes. And last but not least, the third thing that happens in every box is the top is the same as the bottom because they're both E strings. So they're two octaves apart. So pair, pair, two notes, top's the same as the bottom. All right, that's box one. Let's hear how it sounds, jamming. about box two. So box two starts on the fifth fret, okay? Again, all the same theories are going to apply. So we're gonna have a couple of three note pairs, one string with only two notes, 
top is the same as the bottom. Here's box two. Starts out with this lonely shape. Then we instantly go to string with only two notes. So let's try to make sense of this first one. How does that fit into the three things that happen? Well, top's the same as the bottom. So we know we've already got three of the six strings in box two. Top same as the bottom, and there's our two note pair. So now we know that the rest of it is gonna be our pairs. So there's our two notes. Here's our middle pair. It's slightly outside of the position by one fret. A lot of times in improvising, we might just slide. But for the sake of learning this box, and then a ring pair. So, top is the same as the bottom, a two note string, pair one, that's a middle, pair two, pair two, that's a ring. Let's jam on box two. Box two. All right, let's look at box three. So box three starts on the seventh fret. Similar to box two that we know top same as the bottom. That's our first clue. Now we go into the next string and we have a ring pair. So top is the same as the bottom, ring pair. Here's our two note string. So what's left, class? That's right, the middle string pair, so. Top's the same as the bottom. Here's our ring pair. Two notes, middle pair. There we go, there's box three. Let's jam on it. Now it's time for me to note that box three and box four are actually the same because they're only a half step apart, right? So technically box four is the fourth note and G is C, and here's our C note. So that starts on the eighth fret. So that is still in this four fret position. Again, like I mentioned earlier, these boxes are four fret widths or positions, right? When we keep it finite like that, it allows you to memorize these and be able to whip them off and then eventually have the final goal of merging them all together. So, box four is the same as box three. So box four is the same as three, so we just got a two for one. All right, so let's go to box five. So box five is an interesting one because it starts with the two note string and it starts on our middle. So on the 10th fret, we start with our middle. That's followed by our middle pair. 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12. Now watch this, it's followed by our ring pair, but because of the tuning of the B string, also technically known as the warp refraction threshold, which takes us out of the fourth tuning and into the third, a major third tuning temporarily, we have to adjust this, so kind of a funny little thing that happens in this box where our ring pair, they're offset by one fret. And then top's the same as the bottom. So here's box five. Two notes, middle pair, ring pair, two notes. Back down, two notes, ring pair, middle pair, two notes. Let's jam on it. All box 
Five. So here's a neat thing about this play along that I'm giving you today. So you have the sheet of paper that's giving you all the notes so you can memorize the patterns, you can look at it visually. And then you have these play alongs. Since these are all in the same key, you can play any one of these clips that correlate with the specific boxes and play a different box. Let me show you, for example, I'm gonna play box five over the box one. Okay, last but not least, we have box six, which is known as the hot zone. So let's check it out. In the key of G, box six starts on the 12th fret. It also starts in the open string. Let's learn it on the 12th fret. It'll be a little bit more easy to see, okay? Box six starts with a ring pair. Then we have two notes. Now here's our middle pair, but don't forget about the warp refraction threshold. So it's gonna be offset, right? So ring pair, two notes, middle pair, and tops the same as the bottom. So here's box six. Ring, two notes, middle, tops the same as the bottom, let's rock. mixing boxes and clips. Here we go. I guess I should mention now that in the same way that three and four are the same box because they're a half step or one fret off, box seven is the same as one. So box seven starts on 14 or two. So there you have it. It's really only five boxes. So remember the three things that happened in all of them is we have a couple of pairs, a middle pair, a ring pair, a string with two notes, and top same as the bottom. So today we focused exclusively on horizontal playing across the neck. I'm gonna make a follow-up video to this that's about vertical playing up the neck involving one, two, and three string scales. It'll really help you kind of break out of this. But for now, it's a great idea to use these play-alongs or anything in the key of G and really focus on these boxes. Take a day or a week where you really work on box one, a week where you work on box two, or however long you need for each box, and then slowly start to merge them. And a great way to merge them, go up box one, and then try to go down a box. So do that linear kind of thing. And then eventually you can even break that and say, go down five, and how about up two? And then down six, that kind of thing. One other thing I wanted to mention is box six, the reason why I call it the hot zone is because it's where you can strut all your cool blues licks. So if you're a big fan of the minor pentatonic or the blues scale, it's a great way 
to incorporate that. Incorporate it on box six when you're in a major key. Check it out. All right, thanks for watching y'all. See you next time. Thanks for watching my dad's videos. His name is Derek and he makes music as cloud chord like his hat. I'm also a guitarist and Ableton certified trainer. Every Tuesday I upload new videos. So if you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe. And his hat is really cool.